Just days after his release, Zimbabwean pastor Evan Mwarire touched down in South Africa. Mwarire was arrested last week after he was accused of inciting violence and trying to overthrow the government. He was released a few hours after his arrest and charged, charges against him were overthrown. Mwarire, who started the popular hashtag this flag internet campaign in April, is the organizer of a one-day nationwide strike that saw the closure of shops, schools and some government departments. A recent series of demonstrations, the largest in years, have been driven by an economic crisis in Zimbabwe that has left banks short of cash and the government struggling to pay its workers. My colleague Nandi Antoni spoke to Zimbabwean activist Pastor Evon Marire. She asked about the activist, how he feels about the recent arrest and subsequent arrest, as well as the significance of Mandela Day for him. Today has actually been a momentous occasion. I spent the day in Johannesburg, yes, doing interviews with media, but I took time to actually go on the streets. And uh, we went and visited uh, some Zimbabweans that are living in very difficult conditions uh, right here in South Africa, some on the street. And we spent time praying together about our nation, Zimbabwe, praying about their own lives here in South Africa. So for me, I think that was a very fitting thing to do uh, because we wish that our country would come right again and our countrymen would find uh, pride in one day returning to their own homeland and building it. Mm. Now, would you say after having been arrested not so long ago and uh, charged for treason and having charges dropped, would you say that you're running away? Uh, absolutely not. Um, this was a scheduled visit. I travel to South Africa often uh, and to other parts of the world. Uh, often those who know me know that I travel. Uh, there is nothing to run away from because I have not committed a crime. The courts proved that on Wednesday when I was released. Uh, and so for me, there is nothing to run away from. I'll be heading back home. My family is there and my work is there. Uh, and so Zimbabwe is home for me and that's where I'll continue to base until further notice. Mm. Now, what are the future plans for hashtag this flag movement? I think the future plans for the movement are found in the seeds of the movement. And the seeds of the movement was, were to create citizens that are bolder. In Zimbabwe over the years, we have been afraid to speak as a citizen for various reasons, uh, amongst them being the intimidation uh, over the years and, of course, the brutality that we have experienced uh, when people have spoken out. So going forward, our goal remains emboldening citizens we we cannot back down from this space ever again mm -hmm. and our goal now is to grow further and further into becoming citizens that speak more and more but looking ahead we have elections coming up in 2018 and if Zimbabweans are not happy with the current government that they have then it's time for every Zimbabwean to start making preparations to change that within the confines of the law and constitutionally now you've made such a huge movement I mean it's it, it's affected the whole of Zimbabwe and you speaking of elections is there any plans to make your own political party? You know, I have been very effective as a pastor uh, and also as a, as a citizen. And I think that this needs to play out as much as it can. Uh, and I think sometimes trying to get into politics or trying to form it into a political movement may actually kill the impact that it has. I think Zimbabweans are waking up now to the fact that they will be able to make a choice and that they will be able to galvanize around the choice that they want uh, for themselves in 2018. And now you've managed to shut down Zimbabwe. Uh, where to from here? I mean, it's been shops, it's been schools, it's been education. This is the biggest shutdown ever we've mm -hmm. seen in a very long time for Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Where to from here? Well, you know, we, we, you know, we have a number of options uh, because what we are doing here is we are trying to get our government to realize that the citizens have needs that the reality on the ground is not something that we are just dreaming up, but it is, it is a hard life. And so part of our goal with the citizenry is to get government either to a negotiating table or just for them to change things the way that we are asking them to change things. We have not required of them to, uh, you, know, you know, move mountains. We've just said, do not put austerity measures when we are under crisis. Instead, why don't you put in place stimulus packages? Why don't you put in place stimulus, uh, you know, policies? So, for example...